Hello guys, my name is Unders. If you're new here, I'm a drum and bass artist and I make tutorials and do general music production videos here on YouTube. And in this case, I'm putting together a drum and bass tutorial video, um, specifically a liquid drum and bass video set. And well, basically I'm hoping that you enjoy it and you learn a little something from it. Now, if you wanna be able to download the end project, so if you start going through this and you enjoy it, I'm gonna need you to bash a like on each video. It's gonna be helpful for me, and in the end, I'll be able to provide you with those projects, which will be great. Now, right at the start of this, I use uh, something called Loop Cloud. It lets us download samples and drop them in. If for whatever reason you can't get the free version of Loop Cloud, or you just don't have any samples, machines offline, something like that, I have my own sample library and that will just be in the description you can download that and use one of the breaks from that instead so uh, with that all said thank you for subscribing let's get into the video okay guys so here we are in logic and i'm going to take you through just how to make drum and bass in Logic, specifically liquid drum and bass in this case. So this is a default project and we've just got one audio channel open. So we're starting completely fresh here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just get our tempo set. So right up the top here, where we've got this 120, I think we are gonna go for a healthy 174, anywhere between 172 right through to sort of 176 going to be a completely happy BPM for you to work in. Um, 174 is generally where I'll work, 175 is pretty popular. It varies ever so slightly depending on the sort of chords and bass line and things you want in there. That region going to be completely fine. So we've set our tempo. Now the very first thing I will usually work with is going to be a break or something like that that I'm feeling that will give me a little something to work with. So I think what we'll do, we'll use uh, Loop Cloud in this case, and we'll go and grab a drum break. Of course, if you've not seen Loop Cloud before, it's uh, an online sample library from Loop Masters. And what's really great about it, loads of these packs have free samples with them. And when you sign up, you get access to all the free samples. They just end up in your library up here. Um, so it's worth just going and signing up just for that. But I also have used Loop Masters for years. I've got a whole bunch of packs on there. So all of my samples get saved in here. And I've also got a whole bunch of credit up here. So if I want to grab something, I generally can. And what we're going to do is find a break. So let's go into genres. Let's knock you onto drum and bass. And what we'll do, we'll set the key in BPM and we'll go that 172 sort of region. 172 right through to 176. Beautiful. And let's go instruments and drums. And I'm not gonna subject you to listening through, but I'm gonna find a drum break that I wanna start with. Sweet, so I found this uh, little groove I like here. It's 25 credits, but we'll just download it and drop it in the project. So what we can do, we can hit here, purchase it. I'll take that off of my credits. I can literally click and hold on it and drag it and drop it into Logic. And as you can see, that's dropped in there. Now, all well and good. We've got a nice little loop to start working with. I like to mix things up straight away and I I will use this as my sampler for a break. I won't tend to put things into Alchemy or into um, Ultra Beat unless I particularly fancy working that way. So if we go into slice mode, we can hit T and then we can hit I to get into scissors. And then we're gonna choose a division. If we choose sort of a one quarter note and hold control, we can chop our samples up into those divisions. What we'll do is even do it on eighths. You know what, maybe even less, do it on 16th. We've now got a whole bunch of different samples here all cut up that I can actually mess around with individually for the most part. So certain things I might be able to get rid of or move around. So if there's nothing in here, for example, yeah, I can sort of get rid of that, but there's a tiny little click there we like. And we could remove a whole bunch of the stuff that we're not too fussed about. Let's see what we're left with. Cool, so now it's not traveling into itself quite so much. It's a really uh, cut up piece of audio now. I actually quite like that being really rigid and cut off there. 
So I think we're going to roll with that. So you see how very quickly we're making this our own. Just something to note, the sample was at 174, so stuff's going to be slightly off. I'm actually just going to bump us up to 174 just for the sake of convenience of this tutorial. So now we've just got these cut up sounds. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to bring that snare onto its own channel because I want to put some reverb and stuff on it, have a real play around with it. So we highlight the channel and we hit Command and D, copies us a new channel out. And what we're going to do here is just select all the snares. So we can click on it, hold Shift, and we can highlight all our snares. And I know some of these are off point. I actually quite like the wonkiness of it. I think we've accidentally brought a hat over that. Now something really tasty that we could do here, if we now copy this loop, because we've only got four bars at the minute, let's get some variations going nice and easily. So Command A, Click and hold with option held down, and we can duplicate what we've got here. And we'll just stick that at the start of bar five. And let's give ourselves a little bit of variation. So let's have this first snare when it comes in on bar five be slightly different. So using the inspector, which if you can't see on the left hand, we press I to bring up. What we'll do is we're going to pitch that sample down just a little bit so we can treat each of these almost like individual samples now. And uh, we can just transpose it down by one. Cool, it's a really minimal adjustment. And then just to round off into the end of the eight bar, let's triple the snare up. Let's move them up. So first one's going to go up one semitone. Then we're going to go up three. We're going to go up six. That should just give us a little bit of a transition there at the end of the eight bars. Wait, nice and easy to do. Now I think what would be quite nice is to add a shaker. Uh, we're not going to use any more of the external loops. What we'll do is use Apple's loops now and we'll grab a shaker from here. So if we launch Apple loops, uh, you might need to download these if you don't see the same as me, but we can literally put in shaker. Let's get something we like. That could work quite nicely for what we've got here. So you'll notice the green instruments here, they'll bring in uh, actual instrument tracks. So you see here, this has brought in the drum kits. If we were to bring in the blue ones, they're bits of audio. If we bring in the yellow ones, those are drummers. Uh, quite nice when you use the actual kits like this, just because you can edit them really easily and mix them up to make your own thing. Sweet, we've got an all right little loop going. I think we'll also use the drummer here because I want after that eight bar to bring something like a ride in. I'm feeling like a ride's gonna work and really build up the full 16 here. So let's copy this dude again. We've now built ourselves up to a 16 bar loop and we've got some changes happening in different places. And here I'm gonna look to bring a drummer in and maybe just use the ride from that. We might convert it to MIDI. We will see what we get. So we're gonna make a new channel using the plus icon up here. We go into drummer. I'm not gonna use percussion. What I quite like to do here is use songwriter. And we're gonna bring this pattern over here. And we really don't care for the default, we're going to completely undo that. We're going to go onto symbols here and we want to get the ride sound. So let's just start us off here. Ah, perfect. 
We don't want the fill at the end necessarily. Now there's a little bit of a swing happening. So what we could do here is follow kick and snare and we can let it know what we want it to follow. And we're gonna get it to follow the rhythm here. I think we can up the pace here as well. So we're gonna progress after another four bars. So let's copy this hit. And what we can do here is change the pattern up and it will quite often let us change the pace. we need is a little flurry in here to get that to work for us. We want that to be simpler but louder. I think when we transition into this pattern just here, we can double the shaker pace up as well. So we're going to get rid of these three. We go into this one. And you see here in the piano editor, we're going to Command A. We've got all of the notes highlighted. That's already shaking on 16th quite nicely. What we're going to do is shorten them off so they're even shorter. And we're just literally going to copy them over. So we've doubled the pace here. If we just click on this little up, icon up here, we can play just this loop. Sweet, so that's just way too fast. That's not gonna work for us. We're gonna undo that. What we're instead gonna do is boost the velocity of all of them so they increase in level when the bar changes. So if we press T and V when we've got them all selected, click and drag on one sample, you can see they're all changing in color. We're gonna boost them in velocity instead. Hopefully that's gonna increase what we've been up to there. Okay, so now we've got that with a higher velocity. We're gonna copy those through as well. Cool, so we started with just a break and we've cut out the sort of silence areas, but it separates the notes up a little bit. We've brought our snares onto a separate channel. We've created a snare roll and pitched that up. We've introduced a shaker and doubled the shaker in level or velocity for a second pattern. And added two variations of rides so far, giving us a nice 16 bar drum loop. I think what we can do as well on this little gap here, we'll just have a full like breakdown of sound. I'm not gonna have any of these in, so we can just mute these using the inspector. Yeah, that moves over quite nicely there, I like that. Now drum and bass, you'll usually work in 32 bar intervals. So it can be quite nice to build things up in 16s, almost reset it and then build the 16 up again. It depends what sort of track you're liking to build. Um, for the fact this is a tutorial video, I don't want to spend like hours and hours making it. So I'm just gonna take this 16 bar loop we've got here. I'm gonna duplicate this as well into a 32. And um, what we could obviously do is introduce some changes and things into the second 16 while still maintaining the same sort of uh, transitions and everything we've got going on there. Now what I'm really feeling doing at the moment, which is a bit of a mixing thing, but you know, it's all about production. It's about getting the feel of what you want. I want to add some reverb and space to that snare. So we're going to do that. So if we hit X, we can bring the mixer up here and we're going to make a send for it. So while we're here, we'll rename audio track two to snare one. 
because we're probably going to add some others and other sounds in and we're going to create a send for it. So below here where you put plugins in, we've got the bus section and we're going to go bus two and that's going to create an auxiliary for us down here. It comes up as aux two look. And we're going to call you SNR VRB, which for me is snare verb. And since there's a logic tutorial, let's use something like chroma because you know, it's not fair if I use everything external. And we'll just leave it on default for the minute and hear what we've got. All right, that's quite nice. What I'm thinking if we go to via yeah, vocal hall might help that stand out a touch and on this EQ, it's just rolling off the real top. So I don't want to lose any of the highs, to be honest. Um, we don't want to lose any of that. We're not bothered about the low end though. So we'll roll you away. It's nice to have that real top up there. We'll leave that in. I think it'd be nice to have the shaker in the same space as the snare. It's just me. And we're going to put the rides in that same space as well. Now, one thing for me that's not working too well is the kick drum, while nice and tonal, there needs to be like a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a catch coming through there. So I'm actually gonna layer that up. What we try and do, what we'll try and do is find a sample in the loop library here. So just in the Apple loops, let's put in kick and see what we get. We're just gonna listen for something that's got like a click we can use in the kick. That might be what we're seeking, single kick zero two. I'm gonna bring that in, let's just have a little listen. Now we don't necessarily want that repeating every time. We can use this to create yet another rhythm and feeling. If we have it drop on the downbeat of each one. I'm gonna create some more variation to our break that way. I'm going to do that's a little excessive. I'm going to transpose it up. There you go. So I've transposed it up about eight semitones there just to sit on top of our main line and it's just hitting on the downbeat of each bar there. It's like an extra rhythm occurring. Just stick that at the top so we're nice and organized. I think we could find a nice percussion loop as well that could really run along in here. Let's see if we've got some bongos or something like that in the loop library. something without those high-pitched rings in them. Let's try these out. So 
So while that's all right, I think we'll just cut it like this and give ourselves a little bit of a longer loop out of it. So on this second one here, we're gonna cut some of these out and just create a slightly different rhythm. So we've got some variation there. So we'll come straight in with a slightly different sound. It doesn't matter if we keep them ever so slightly off beat as well, we'll get away with it because of the nature of the rhythm. We do something similar to that. It gives us a little bit more to play with. Now you could go a lot harder and really cut it up and use all the individual sounds. Um, but again, tutorial video, trying to get it together within a feasible time of you actually watching it and not having your minds melt. Cool, so where we've got that change happening with the uh, pitch up of the snares, I think we could do something similar with these bongo sounds here. So what we'll do is cut these guys right back, put a, another sound in here. It doesn't have to be on the same rhythm at all, but we'll do the same pitch up method, which I think was one semitone, three semitones, six semitones. It sort of creates that same feeling and transition. And then that moves into the next and it's instantly juxtaposed with the fact that the rides come in. So do you know what, we could loop the whole thing. We now got a nice long 32 bar cycle. And we'll probably do some edits further in the 32 bar down the line. Sweet. So you see how that all works. Transitional, we've got sort of eight bars, a little roll and change, 16 bars, a little snare pitch up and change with a new introduction of a sound of the ride. Off only four bars, audio break, all the same sounds come back in, but it's a new rhythm for the ride and an increase in the shaker level. And then we loop back round at the end of the 16. So we've got all those changes happening in a really short bit of time, but without really spoiling what's going on. So that's our drums. Um, what we'll look at in the next video, we'll build up a chord pattern to work with this, and then we'll look at creating a bass line to sit under it. So I will see you guys in the next video.